Hi guys, I'm Ryan Newsman and welcome to my flight hunting channel. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything as I upload it. Uh, my channel already contains hundreds of videos covering a wide range of both patterns and techniques from the basic to the more advanced. Uh, so without delay, let's get on with the show. Hi guys, so uh, I'm going to tie another one of these blasts from the past flights. This one is a black dog nabbler. So I have a Camzan B830 in a size 8 here and I'm using a black or well it was a very dark grey but it's a this is a nano silk so it's a very strong tie-in thread and I'm going to take that down as far as the barb now as uh, you may have seen me tie other dog nobblers, the uh, dog nobbler is a weighted fly. So we're going to use lead wire for that. Uh, or suppose you could use a lead free alternative if you have one. So if I take a cocktail stick and some super glue and I just coat the uh, shank of the fly in the super glue. And that will adhere my lead wire to the shank. So I'm going to do the front sort of half to one third of the fly, depending on how fast you want it to sink. And I'm going to stop shy of the eye on head and snap it off. And that way I'll get a nice neat uh, tapered almost finish to it. So when you're wrapping across the wraps of lead you need to take big wide uh, turns and that way uh, it doesn't dive in between the wraps so easily. Once we've done that I'm just gonna coat it with super glue and that'll sort of hold the wraps of thread and some of it will go down in between it'll just make it a more uh, a stronger construct shall we say. So I'm going to use black marabou for the tail on this fly. So I'll take a marabou, I don't know what you call this, like a blood or whatever it's called. And I'm just going to nip out the very tip of it. And I'm going to measure it back so that it's about one and a half to two times the length of the body sticking out the back. And you see I've tied it in tight to the back of my lead and that'll help to just thicken the body up and remove the step when we approach the lead. So I let this hang out the back. Now I tend to prefer the sort of natural uh, tips of the marabou if we can help it but if you want it to be shorter or your marabou isn't that great of a shape then just grab it and rip the tips off. So don't don't cut them with scissors because then you get a very flat, uh, unnatural look to the rear of the tail. So I now have two strands of an uh, Opal Mirage and I'm going to tie that in. I've matched it up to the length of the back of the tail. So I'll tie it in and then double that back. That means there'll be four strands in total sitting on the top of our tail. That is, we can leave it there if we want, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other half of my marabou feather and I'm going to measure that to the same length and lay it on top. I'm sort of pinching it in place and then wrap back. I'll tie this off up to the uh, weighted wire section again. And then I'm going to take my cocktail stick again and 
some of my super glue and I'm just going to glue that and I'm going to glue sort of around the shank. Now I don't want it to wick back into the tail itself but I do want it to sort of seep through the materials and therefore prevent it from taking water up which could rust our hook. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take a silver wire or silver uh, oval and tie that in. Now if you wanted a much more prominent rib you could use a flat silver uh, because we're going to use a chenille, a black chenille body and chenille by its nature is quite a deep material so ribs can tend to get lost in it a little bit sticking out so we'll just trim that off. Then we're gonna wrap. Wrap the chenille. Once we've a couple of wraps on it, the front I'm gonna snip it off. And then I'm just going to remove whatever bits of fluff and that'll just leave me a couple of bits of the core which I can then tie in neater. So to rib this we can go in the opposite direction or if we're wrapping in the same direction as we wrapped our chenille it took maybe six or seven turns of chenille so if I come forward and say three or four turns of tinsel it means I'm going across multiple wraps uh, of the chenille at one time and therefore it's less likely to dig into the middle of them. When I get to the front I'm just going to change the angle of my uh, rib and take it forward as I'm tying it in. And then like the other dog nobblers we're going to do a head of peacock hurl. So I'll take three long peacock hurls And I'm going to match up the bases of them here. So what I'm after is these bits that I stripped off. Now those will give me much more uh, grip when I go to grab them and twist them. So those are in line. And now tie these in by somewhere near their tips. Within an inch or so of it. And trim that off. Then I'm going to take a super glue gel and I'm just going to run that on a couple of inches of my tying thread and then I'm going to wrap over the bed of where uh, the hurl is going to wrap. Now you see I went over the front as well and because it was super glue it sort of stuck to itself as I went back and that helped me to remove the step portion at the front of the wire. So I'll flip the fly over now so that the tying thread and the uh, hurls are coming off at the same point and that means that whenever I go to wrap it there's no undue tension and it's less likely to break. So as I wrap these will become a little bit looser so I just need to keep on tightening them up as I go. So I wrap forward then I go back over itself and come forward again each time that the rope sort of gets that little bit uh, looser I tighten it up again and when I come to the front I'm just going to let it unravel on itself so that I can tie them in. So I tied them forward then I folded them back on themselves and tied over and that just means that they should not slip out. Uh, as for the ones that were wrapped, uh, because they were twisted around the tying thread that means there's a core of tying thread which is wrapping over those twists so even if one of them breaks it shouldn't totally unravel whereas if you just wrap them on normally then the chances are that that could happen if one of them went. To finish the fly then I'm just going to 
you can either use varnish or I'm using super glue here. Varnish the head of the fly. And that is our black dog nobbler tide. So another blast from the past. Um, and a type of fly that when I started off fly fishing for rainbows used to do a lot of damage. It's gone by the wayside a bit, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work again. So if you like what you've seen, give us a like, subscribe, tell your friends. And until next time, tight lines. Thanks for watching.